Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I am still in Atlanta, right? I am at the um, Hilton Atlanta. We just got done the uh, 120 conference with Eric Thomas and Jamal King and Inky and like Nikki and Moose and just there was like a million, hey guys, there was like a million amazing, amazing speakers on, hey guys, amazing speakers this weekend. And so you guys know that I do not go live a whole lot, which is something coming out of this conference I am going to change. And I meant to name this, guys. I meant to name this. Hey, y'all, I'm still in, who's still in Atlanta, guys? Um, who is still here? A ton of people are here. I know some people flew out already, but there are a bunch of action items, right, that were given by the speakers, a bunch of uh, nuggets, right, for people to take home. And guys, um, I say this often, but I'm not sure if everybody even really, really gets it, how I say that great leaders are great students. Guys, there was a time for me to be, you know, where I'm on the stage and I am the expert and I am pouring into people. But guys, this weekend, I actually came with the mindset to receive. And first of all, I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm just on my floor, like in the middle of the lobby, right? And I'm not sure about the audio, so I hope that you guys can hear me. Somebody type in the comments, can you guys hear me okay? But I wanted to jump on here. I meant to name this live. Oh my gosh. I meant to name it that I never wanted to be in the credit industry. Did you hear me? This is what I want to talk to you guys about because in the, in the conference, right, there was a lot of talk about being authentic and telling your story and about, you know, what you need to do to get to the next level, guys. Oh, you can hear me? Good, 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 good. Guys, look, y'all know I can never, ever plan this out, but before I leave Atlanta, I want to start working in the things that I said I was going to do, guys. I'm holding myself accountable, and I'm on here being very transparent with you all because this is a little bit of the missing link, I think, for even myself and my brand that I need to work on, and so coming out of this event you know everybody's supposed to have some action items that they actually need to do and guys when I was here listening I learned from every single speaker on the stage I need you to hear me you can have a brand you can be a leader you can be a coach you can have all these things and still be mature enough humble enough wise enough even to know that you don't know everything, that everybody adds value. And so when I was in the audience, I really went with the spirit of, I'm here to receive, I'm here to receive, I'm here to receive, because guess what? There's another level for me, just like there's another level for you on here. Everybody who's on here, uh, many of you have success, you have results, you're at a certain place in your life. That's why you're even connected to somebody like me, or an ET, or a Jamal King, or whoever else, right? But always understand that there's always another level, guys. There's always another level. You have never arrived. There's always something else you should be learning. And so in this conference, right, a couple of my action items, right, that I really took away is, you know, number one, you know, one of my tangible things, and mind you, for people who are just coming on, because I wasn't even sure, like, I don't know, what is it, Monday? I don't even know what day of the week it is. I know people might be at work, but I just said, I'm just going to do it now, right? Like, not now, right now. When you really start taking notes like this, you come out of conferences, I want all of you guys, stop getting inspired, stop getting motivated, stop getting hyped up, right, when you're joining courses and doing master classes, going to these events, and then not doing any of the work. It is pointless if you don't do any of the work. So I'm holding myself accountable and making sure that before I even leave, I'm already starting. And y'all know I don't even go on lives a lot. So this is part of my growth, right? Because live is a little scary for me, guys. I'm just going to be honest with you because y'all know I will say anything out my mouth and you can't like reverse when you're on live. Okay, so... One of the, some of the things that I, I really took away is, you know, number one, my, for people who are just coming on, the name of this IG Live is I never wanted to be in the credit industry. Guys, I'm going to share a very transparent story with you guys because I never wanted to be in credit repair. I never wanted to be in credit. I don't like the credit repair industry. Yes, y'all. And I'm about to explain to you exactly, exactly why. I'm going to be super live on the, super um, transparent on this live. But three of my takeaways, guys. So number one is I have some tasks and some action items that I have to do with my marketing team to relaunch Credit Leverage Lifestyle. And let me tell you why it needs to be relaunched. Because I just could have put the product out there and I didn't launch it the right way, and that's why it hasn't reached everybody it needs to reach. And now I know more than ever that that information needs to get out to more of you for a couple of reasons. Number one, you need the right information so you can actually have results. Are y'all tired of having these classes and these courses and these ebooks and you still don't have your results? You still don't have your goal. You still have bad personal credit. You still have bad um, business credit. You still don't have to understand financial literacy, right? So my course deep dives into everything and I need to get it actually out there. So finishing those tasks so it can get out there to the people who want results so you can stop 
working on your credit for two years and three years and five years to actually just have a plan and make the plan. And then also, guys, so you can get, stop getting scammed. Can we talk about it today? Like, I'm in the middle of the lobby. I haven't even eaten and I don't even care. Can we talk about it? Good morning, guys. So you guys can stop being scammed because I'm going to be honest with you guys. The credit repair industry is very tainted, very, uh, doesn't have a good connotation. There's a lot of people, there's more people doing the wrong thing than the right thing. Come on, somebody, I'm gonna step on some toes today and I don't even care. In this industry, there are more people doing the wrong thing than the right thing. There are more people that do not have the knowledge than do. There are more people scamming than are helping, right? So I never wanted to be in this industry. Do you know what it feels like to go to some conferences and go to some events and there's all these professionals and they're doctors and they're lawyers and they're coaches and they're consultants and they're in the MBA and they're all these things. And then they're like, what do you do? And you're like, I'm in credit repair. Do you know how they look at you? It's because of the negative connotation, right? So even coming into this industry, I knew that I had to overcome a barrier, guys. I needed to stick with me for people to understand that I'm different than that. Guys, there is a reason why my videos are different. There's a reason why my language is different. There's a reason why my passion is different. I never wanted to be in the credit repair. This chose me. Did you hear me? This chose me, guys. Before, and I'm gonna tell you guys the actual story about how this came about because I've never really shared this before and a lot of you guys never know that I never, ever, ever, ever wanted to be in this industry. This is not what I saw for myself, guys. But the run reason why I'm so passionate about it is because looking good on paper changed my life. I need you to hear me. This is not a hustle for me. This is not, you know, a way to just make money. This is not like, you know, just a ticket to, to get out of my nine to five job. Guys, this is a calling for me. This is why it's different. This is an anointing for me. I am not passionate about credit. Can we be, can we be real? Who do you know in the first grade, second grade, third grade, and you say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they be like, I want to be a credit repair specialist. Come on, somebody. And guys, I'm in my 40s, so I need you to understand that I was doing credit for TransUnion, for a national credit bureau, before YouTube, before Facebook, before Instagram, before or before credit repair was a thing, guys. I was doing it for thousands of people across the nation. Never in a million years that I think that credit repair was gonna be what it is right now. And that's why there's so many shady people doing it, right? Because you don't need a license. You don't need to go to school for it. You don't. You literally can put up an Instagram page or a Facebook page and be like, I'm a credit repair specialist. And then if you have good marketing and if you kind of communicate and you even look like you know a little bit, because so many people know so little, if you look like you know a little tiny bit, they will follow you. And so I was like, I don't feel like getting in the middle of all of that, guys, right? I, I just don't feel like it. It's a lot. So I'm going to tell you what happened, okay? Why did I never, ever, ever want to be in the credit repair industry? And why am I probably one of the number one, and I'm going to say it just like that, walk heavy, that has that actual knowledge to get you guys results? And I want you to think about it real quick before I tell you guys the story. Today is story time, okay? Why would somebody like me, Terry Kowser, single mother of three from Philadelphia, start my business at my dining room table with my laptop and my cell phone? Why would someone like me be connected to somebody like a Jamal King? I need you to listen to me, guys. I am not the biggest brand. I am not the, um, I am not the flashiest brand. I am not the most well-known brand. I am not the brand that has been around the longest, but knowledge results, character, ethics, right? Doing it for a passion, for a purpose, for a calling. Guys, just like real estate to Jamal is a vehicle to get to his freedom, a vehicle to save his family, a vehicle to have legacy. Guys, credit for me was a vehicle. I am not passionate about credit. Who is, come on now, who is actually passionate about credit? Like seriously, right? I'm not passionate about credit. I'm passionate about it being a vehicle. I'm passionate about it being a solution. I'm passionate about it being something that we all have access to. I'm passionate about it giving people options and opportunities that they really would not normally have. Guys, this is why, even y'all know, when I did that workshop yesterday, this is why when I'm so passionate, people are like, oh my God, she's so hype about credit. No, y'all. I built wealth for my family because I figured out how to look good on paper. And you can do the same thing because guess what? Credit doesn't care if you're white, black, 
uneducated, a criminal, a, a, a prostitute, a, a graduated from college, if you came from a good background, we all start with the same thing, zero. The FICO scoring model goes from 350 to 900 or 850 for all of us. So if you don't have mommy and daddy that has money, if you don't have a trust fund, if you don't have an inheritance, if you don't have speaking, anybody speaking life into you or giving you a way, right, giving you a vehicle, you can work on your credit and then use it for the things that are going to build wealth. I'm not talking about a Benz. I'm not talking about rewards points. And I'm just going to say it like that. I'm not talking about vacation. I'm not talking about diamonds and furs. I'm talking about using your credit to start a business. I'm talking about using your credit to get properties. I'm using talking about getting credit to build your legacy and your wealth, to put it into things that are income producing that can then free yourself. Guys, please understand to me that, well, please understand that wealth to me has nothing to do with money, guys. It is about freedom. Do you understand what it feels like to wake up in the beginning, in the morning, and be able to control your day from beginning to end? Guys, that's what credit did for me. And so, let me go back. There's a reason why someone like me is connected to a Jamal King, and I want you guys to always think about it. They do not endorse or work with anybody who is not battle proven, battle tested, has the results. Yes, there are brands bigger. Yes, there are brands more flashy. Yes, there are brands that have been around longer. But I am probably one in 10 in the nation, one in 10 probably in the nation that actually worked for a credit bureau and is in this space. That means everybody else, I don't care how much they say they know, everybody else got the information second and third hand. They either worked on it themselves and learned through trial and error or through a course or through a book, but there's a different level of respect of knowledge, of application you get when you actually learn from that actual credit bureau, from doing it on the back end. That's why I always tell you guys what, the success is in the details. It's the small things I say to you guys, that I'm like, no, don't do it like that, this will get you a different result. Do you know how many people here at the 120 conference stopped me and were like, I listened to your videos and I bought my house. I listened to your videos, I had a jump start with you and now I'm buying an apartment building. One lady here was buying an apartment building after a jump start with me. Guys. That's a calling. That's an anointing. That's, that's destiny. That's not, I want to be a credit repair specialist. So let me explain to you guys why I never wanted this. Never did I want this. So I worked for TransUnion, right? You guys know that now. The people that don't know me, I used to work for TransUnion, right? That's why my level of knowledge is unmatched, period, okay? I used to work for TransUnion, and I learned very quickly before all of this, guys, that, you know, you just go to functions, people ask you where you work, different things, they say, you know, what do you do? And I would say, you know, I work for TransUnion, and guys, immediately, people would stop me, and they would ask me questions. They would be like, what about this collection? What about this repo? How do I raise my score? I would get inundated with questions every single time I opened up my mouth. Guys, we're talking about like 2000. I have been in this industry for decades. Decades, y'all, okay? So I need you to hear me. So we're talking about before all of this, before Jamal King, before YouTube, before Terry's Tips, before Credit Leverage Lifestyle, like before I even had this consulting firm, we're talking about me actually still working at the bureau. And people would ask me, I mean, I would get stopped at the grocery store. I would get stopped at the gas stations. I would be at events and people would ask me and it would be, become like a mini credit workshop, right? Where people would flood me with questions. I used to get so annoyed, right? Listen to me guys, and I was not this person. I had not worked on personal growth yet. I didn't have mentorship. I was running from the thing that was my blessing. I was running from the thing that was my calling. I was like, I do not want to talk about credit. I don't want to help you all. I don't like, like, listen, like, like figure it out yourself. I used to get irritated guys people would flood me with questions I said but like another credit question so what I started to do is not tell people I work from a bureau I need you guys to follow me why I never wanted to be in this industry I started to hide it I would not tell people where I work so only the people in my very 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 close circle guys would know that I actually work for a bureau and the reason why I'm doing this live real quick my three action items was you know I need to relaunch my course to meet more people because too many of you guys don't have results you're getting scammed you're in credit repair for two and three and four years and it's nonsense okay so I need to teach you the right way if I teach you how to do it as opposed to doing it for you then you'll have the information for a lifetime guys okay so stop running from doing the work if I can teach you guys you'll have it forever the second thing I learned from being in this event is that I haven't been transparent with you guys I haven't been very good at communicating to you guys why my brand is different why what I tell you to do is different why my results 
are different. I'm gonna talk heavy on here because some people have cars and credit cards from other brands and some people have 10 and 15 properties and legacy is six and seven figures from mine. It's for a different reason. Cause I tell you guys how to do it the right way which actually means you have to do some work. And then the third thing is that in this 120 conference, one thing, the reoccurring theme is that you're not at the next level because of your relationships and your environment. So me, myself, I'm gonna come out of this reevaluating my environment, my relationships, also communicating to you guys better why I do this and what the difference is, and then also getting everything out to you guys you need to be, actually be successful. That's why I'm jumping on this live today. Look, before I leave, before I leave Atlanta, starting with, starting with my action items. So I never told anybody I work for TransUnion, I would lie about it. Years and years and years. I literally then went into healthcare, guys. Went into healthcare. Had a regular corporate job, went completely different industry. Guys, I even have a pension right now. I did a whole 10 year bid as an executive in healthcare, guys. Ran from it, didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I had done some investing right after credit and then the market crash happened, guys, right? So again, before there was a course about real estate, I had the credit, I had the drive, I had some connections. I did not have a system. I did not have a team. I did not have mentorship. So guys, I had credit. I started investing in properties. I lost everything. Look, you don't got to worry about my dirt. I'm gonna tell you my dirt. I did it all wrong. And when the market crash happened in 2008, 2009, guys, I lost everything. God has built me up and stripped me down. It built me up and stripped me down. It built me up and stripped me down like a good four or five times. Y'all know Steve Har Harvey's story, how he built up things and lost a bunch of times, guys? I'm being transparent with you guys because I'm so passionate about you guys getting this because even when you think you know, it can be taken away like that if you don't do the right thing, if you don't have a system, if you don't put into in multiple streams of income, right? So me having some of the knowledge, but not the system, meant that I lost everything, guys. I lost everything. I'm not sure you guys understand what that feels like. And so I went back to corporate America. I said, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I don't want to have nothing to do with credit. I don't want to um, invest. I don't want nothing to do with it, nothing. Then hits 2015. If any of you guys follow me, then you know that 2015 was my breakthrough year. I got introduced to network marketing and pause right here for a second, guys. When I always say, when you hear like those memes that people say that your life in five years is gonna be the result of what you're doing right now, guys, I want you to think about we're in 2021. My breakthrough year was 2015. Hello, somebody. 2020 probably was my breakthrough year. Five years, guys. Five years. You are celebrated in public for what you do in private. I was working in private for you guys to see the manifestation and the fruit now. Come on, somebody, what are you doing in the dark? What are you doing when nobody's looking? Are you really doing affirmations? Are you really doing goals? Are you really self-assessing? Are you really fasting? Are you really sacrificing? Or are you watching a Netflix you know, marathon? Are you you know, watching realty? Like, what are you really doing in the dark when nobody is looking? Guys, I was working in the dark. I haven't watched TV since 2016. I fasted from TV in 2015 and haven't turned it on yet. You know why? And my elite 10 people know this, and you know why? Because I'm not where I need to be yet. Did you hear me? I don't have the luxury of watching TV right now, even right now, right now, I don't have the luxury of watching TV because I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet. And I don't have no problem telling you that because this is what has been probably the missing link, my aha moment, is that I needed to be more transparent with you guys because everybody makes it seem like their life is so perfect and they have arrived. Lies. I still got more work to do. I ain't nowhere near where I'm supposed to be yet. Right? And because I'm a single mother of three, I don't have any family. My mother and my father are deceased. I was in foster care. I don't have the luxury of not being successful. Come on, somebody. Let me say it again because maybe you didn't catch it. I don't have the luxury of not being successful. I have to make this work. Like so many of you guys are like, nobody in my family is an entrepreneur. Nobody is an investor. Nobody taught me the system. Nobody taught me either. But guess what? I don't have the luxury of not doing this and not figuring it out. Figure it out. Like real talk, figure it out. Stop being connected to all these brands and you're not doing the work. I don't have the luxury of not figuring it out because I have three sons, guys. And if something happens to me, they have nobody. Jesus, I need y'all to get this. I have three sons. And if I don't make this work, they have, what if I was born tomorrow? 
what would they have, guys? I had to build this because I was in foster care and I was in group homes and both of my parents were, you know, had struggled with addiction and I had my son at 17. I didn't want that to be the narrative for them. What I want you guys to take out of that is that you're the change agent. You're the chosen one. You're the one to break the cycle. And I don't care if nobody in your family did it before. You figure it out. Seriously, it's on you. If you're on, it's on you. So let me go back. So y'all know I will get on a rant. So didn't want to be in a credit repair industry. Don't like the credit repair industry. Has a negative connotation. It's just a lot of people doing the wrong things. I didn't even want to be associated. Went back into corporate America for almost 10 years. 2015 got introduced to network marketing. Now, I'm not saying network marketing. I'm not telling you guys all to, to be, go to a network marketing company. But what I am saying is I got introduced to the right type of leadership. Thank you, Suleiman Rahman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bugs. Thank you, like Mr. Bean and Mrs. Bean, right? Because they planted some seeds. I need you to hear me, somebody. You're not going to have a harvest if you have no seeds in the ground. They planted some seeds. I was able to see for the very first time in my life millionaires and multi-millionaires that looked like me, that did it from the mud, that grinded on their own and had the results. Guess what? It works if you work it. There were people in network marketing that lost money and had no money, and there were people that were multi-millionaires. What's the difference? The difference is the work you put in. Come on, somebody. That's for everything, right? So I got introduced to leadership, right? I got introduced to mentorship. In one of my leadership meetings, right, that's when I got saved, I got introduced to my church, I got introduced to mentorship, I got introduced to a system, and then guess what happened after that? I got introduced to Eric Thomas. And they said, I said to these leaders, I want the results that you have. What do you do? Guys, this is where I was coachable and trainable. Half of you don't have the results because you're not coachable and trainable. Somebody is telling you what to do and you know everything. Somebody is telling you what to do and you're not executing. Somebody is telling you what to do that has the results and you're not listening to them. You think you have a better way. Guys, at that time, I did not have results. I did not have results. These people did have results. So when they told me what to do, they said, you need to work on personal growth. You need to write in your journal. You need to read more. You need to cut off distractions. You need to be plugged in. You need to come every single Tuesday. We had a meeting at the First District Plaza. Shout out to my Organo people. Shout out to my Philadelphia people. Every single Tuesday, we had a meeting at the First District Plaza. They said, you need to be consistent and come be plugged in. Guys, God is the best of all planners because that thing right there, it groomed me. Whether you're tired, whether you're hungry, whether you're sick, whether it's raining, whether it's so whether there's whether one person that shows up or 500 people that show up. Every single Tuesday, I was there. It taught me discipline. It taught me consistency. And then guess what started to happen? I started to have results in my business. Guys, follow me. This is how it led to credit repair. This led to Eric Thomas, to Jamal King, to the blessing that I have right now, and I'm grateful. And I need to share this with you all because I haven't been good at communicating the story. This is only one of the stories, okay? But why I never wanted to be in credit repair. And so as I started building the business, they wanted me to do what, guys? Start presenting. Guys, what do I do now on YouTube? What do I do now for everything else? What is my brand about? Talking, presenting talking, presenting. God was preparing me. So every single Tuesday, almost every single Tuesday, I started doing the presentation for a crowd. They teach you, you know, to be enthusiastic, whether it's one people or one person or 10 person, how to tell the same story, how to communicate the facts, how to do it when you're tired. Guys, it groomed me for greatness. It groomed me for the big stage, doing the small things when you don't have the results, when it's not 500 people are going to groom you for that big stage. Stop turning your nose up at small, humble beginnings. So that right there started to groom me, right? And then at the end of it, they would ask your background. So when they would ask my background, guys, and you have to listen to me because this chose me. Again, I never wanted to be in credit repair ever in a million years. I hated it. And to be honest with you guys, when you do it the right way, like real talk, when you do it the right way, it's tedious, it's time consuming, it's stressful. And notice I said when you do it the right way, because all these brands that just send a letter out for you guys, a blanket letter, and send it every single month and take $100 for you, that's not credit repair. And I'm gonna just say, that's not stressful. That's not tedious. That's easy. That's why you don't have the results. That's why I'm here telling you guys the truth. And I'm gonna be honest and say one more thing to you guys. I am not the popular voice in credit. 
This was an ethics thing for me, right? So you see all these videos, you hear all this language. I can get you to an 830 days. Get a, no, grow your score 200 points in a week. All this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I'll be honest with you, even sometimes now, I'll click on some of these videos because I'm like, well, maybe they know something I don't know. And every single time it's add an authorized account, pay all your credit cards. Well, if you had the money to pay all your credit cards, you probably wouldn't have credit issues. Hello? And y'all are following them and paying thousands of dollars to tell y'all some common sense. Are you kidding me? And just adding an authorized account, if I hear that one more time on one more video, guess what? No underwriter is about to give you a $500,000 mortgage because you have an authorized account or because you have a My Jeweler card or because you have a Finger Hut card. Can we just be real, somebody? Right? Nobody, nobody's about to give you business credit because you have an authorized cherry line for American Express, it's $20,000. Like, come on, you don't build wealth that way. So I had to then get comfortable in my own skin saying, everybody else is saying this. They got more people than me. Their brands are growing more than me. They got more, they're flashy. And I'm like, God, I know that that stuff's not right. And here I am with this little small brand, right? Jesus, I need y'all to get this. It was my ethics that God said, Terry, do it the right way and trust me. Don't do what they're doing. Don't write form letters and do it like, t tell them the story. Teach them the right way, give them the foundation. Let them know that this is a vehicle to get to their goals. Credit is not your goal, guys. 800 is not your credit, uh, 800 is not your goal. Business credit is not your goal. You need an 800 for what? for your house, for your business, for your legacy. It's a vehicle, it's a vehicle, it's a vehicle, it's a vehicle. It's not your goal, it's a way to get to your goal. And so I said, all right guys, so my videos say it's gonna take some time. My videos say it's gonna take a little bit of work. How many of you guys know this is a microwave society, everybody wants it yesterday. So my language and my videos is the unpopular way to do it, but it's the right way but it's the right way, right? So you guys actually have results. So when I was going, I was in, I had to struggle with that, right? I, and, and, I, and I still struggle with it, but God just said, and I need all of you to get this, who is for you is for you. Who really wants the wealth building, who wants the six and seven figures, you will attract. Because guess who's partnered with Jamal King and Make Real Estate Real? Guess who has thousands of people across the nation with testimonies, with legacy, with wealth building? People were crying here in Atlanta, guys. And I don't have a bunch of pictures and I don't have a bunch of videos. You know why? Because I didn't come here for that. I didn't highlight everybody who stopped me in the hallway. I hugged them and I was in the moment with them and I talked to them because everything doesn't need to be captured. They know what I did for them and so does God and this is why he still blesses me, right? But you know how many people stopped me here in Atlanta that were crying? They were like, oh my God, like I got my house. I was able to leave my, like, I, I had to go back to my room and pray and cry because I was like, I'm so grateful that like, like I'm just grateful and I'm humble guys. So going back, I did not, I made a decision not to do credit repair like everybody else. I made a decision in the very beginning to do it the right way. Even though it's unpopular, even though I'm not flashy, even though I know that if I did other things, I could grow faster, I could grow bigger. And I just trusted God. I said, you know what? I'm going to just do what I'm supposed to do and I will attract who is assigned to my destiny, who is assigned to this journey, right? So I need you guys to follow me. So I'm in network marketing and they ask your background, guys. I know, right? And I start to say, I used to work for TransUnion and credit repair. Um, I was in the credit industry. I talk about real estate. So what started to happen, guys, I need you to follow me. This is like 2015, 2016. I hadn't started my business yet, right? Had been just introduced to network marketing. People used to come find me at the back of the room and do what again, guys? Ask me credit questions all over again. So this time, I was working on myself a little bit, so I would say, if you do this and this and this, you can buy a house. If you do this and this. So I started to, in the back of the room, at my organo presentations, as people were asking me questions, I used to give them the blueprint to fix their credit. In the back of the room, didn't have a business, didn't have a website, didn't even want to be an entrepreneur. I was just helping, guys. What do I say to my mentees? Give it away for free first. I wasn't thinking about a business. I wasn't thinking about credit repair. I was just trying to help. Then I started to hate my corporate job, right? And I started to think to myself, same thing I tell you guys, guys, I don't tell you guys anything that I don't do myself. I said, with knowledge, skills, and experience, 
do I have that I can get out of this job that's a great title, great salary, and I absolutely hate it, that I'm getting anxiety in my stomach, that is not my purpose, it is not my destiny. And mind you, at this time, I was listening to personal development, I was listening to Eric Thomas every single day. It became part of my daily routine. Guys, adults learn by repetition. Stop going to one conference, reading one book, watching one video, and thinking you're gonna be transformed. It's every single day. I do something for personal development every single day and this started in 2015 so i started watching eric thomas in the beginning because that's who i was exposed to right and look at god look at god okay because how many millions of people follow eric thomas and jamal king and all those things but little old terry jesus single mother of three from philadelphia follow me somebody so i started working on my personal growth and the more i worked on personal growth and purpose and destiny the more i started to hate my job I started to hate that job. And guys, guess what? Nothing changed with the job. What changed? Me. I said, all I'm doing is making a bunch of rich people more rich. I hated my job, right? And then one day, now this part wasn't smart. <laughs> because then one day, I just did what? I just didn't go back to work. Yeah, that's that. I'm a high, anybody who's at the disc assessment, I'm a super high I and a high D, a high I and a high D. So I had incorporated my business in 2016 and started doing a little bit on the side. And then I just was like, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. This is not my purpose. It's not my destiny. And one day I just did not go back to work. Now that was not smart, guys. My master's is in human resources development and I know better, right? Because right after I took that leap of faith and guys, I need you to follow me through this whole story, okay? Because I never wanted to be in credit repair. It's going to take a certain amount of risk. You cannot have great reward with no risk. You cannot have great reward with staying in your comfort zone. Am I telling you to go out and quit your job? No, because I had some dark days after that, right? But what I did is when you jump out like that, then my mindset was this has to work. This has to work. I had launched my business, right? I had incorporated my business, not fully really launched, didn't really know anything about being an entrepreneur, guys. I'm being honest with you. I knew about credit. I didn't know about being an entrepreneur. I didn't know about digital marketing. I didn't know. I knew nothing. Look, nothing. Nothing. I had a skill and I had a desire and I had a purpose. I had a skill. I had a desire. I had a purpose. So I started my business. Um, I left the job and then I wasn't making enough money to sustain all my bills. This is like 2016, 2017, guys, right? Because I left my job without a plan. I hit the ground. I almost lost everything again. 2017, guys, we're in 2021. I need y'all to hear me. I'm being very transparent because God just said, tell the story. Jesus. So I almost lost everything. At this point, 2017, Jesus. I had a house. I had two houses, my mom had passed away. I'm a single mother of three. I have responsibilities, I have bills. And I just left my job and you start to have self-doubt, right? Jesus, this is why I don't do life. God just said, I'm just being obedient. <sighs> so you start to have self-doubt. You start to say, God, I know what you showed me. Did I make the wrong decisions? Do, am I, is this meant for me? You start to say, God, um, was I selfish by jumping out, going after my dreams, knowing that I have a job, knowing that I have responsibilities, knowing that I have kids? You start to say, God, kids, my kids didn't ask to be here. I have to provide for them. I almost lost everything. I almost lost my house. I almost lost everything, guys, chasing my dream. But I know what God showed me. He just said, hold on. Like, hold on to it. Like, just hold on. Just hold on. And so I kept on working my business. And this is where I told you guys I went and got a little $40,000 contract position, right? because I was working my business, but I didn't know about being an entrepreneur. I didn't know about communicating it to you guys. I didn't know I wasn't getting my, my business out there. I had the results, but I was only reaching local people because I didn't know how to be an entrepreneur. I had a skill, but I didn't know how to be an entrepreneur, right? And I was passionate about what I was doing because looking good on paper changed my life. I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be a, a high school dropout on welfare somewhere on drugs. That was, that was what was spoken into my destiny. That, based on where I came from, the whole gutter, the whole gutter, group homes, shelters, foster care. I wasn't supposed to be here. And so when I almost lost everything, I said, God, I ain't get this far to lose it all. Not, not the, look, not today, not today. What do I need to do? So I went back and got a W-2 job, still have my business. This is 2017, guys. We're in 2021, and I'm linked to who? Where am I at right now? With who? 
I need you to follow me because sometimes your blessings are on the other side of stepping out on faith or on the other side of making it work no matter what or on the other side of not having any excuses or on the other side of making it through the storm no matter what, guys. So I almost lost everything. I kept on working, working, working. I got my little $40,000 contract position. I said, you know what? I'm going to work here for 12 months. And this job is going to help me invest into my business and I'm going to use my business to just pay my basic bills. Sometimes you need to slow down and speed up. Sometimes you need to slow down and speed up. Sometimes you need to slow down and speed up. That's a word for somebody. Stop being so big. Be humble. It was embarrassing to have to go get a job. Yes, people talked about me. Yes, people laughed at me. Yes, people said, your little business isn't doing good. Who laughing now? Come on, somebody. The people that are laughing at you are doing absolutely nothing. The people who are not supporting you are doing absolutely nothing. The people who are talking about you aren't tied to your destiny. Half of them need my help now. But yes, I had to sit back and go take that job and that decision right there to take that $40,000 job while I was building my business saved my life because in 2019 is when the Verified Eric Thomas event came. And that's when I was a sponsor at that event and that's when one person remembered my name. I'm gonna save that for a different live. That's when one person remembered my name and that one person was Tiffany. And Tiffany was working with who? Jamal King. Who was working on what? Make Real Estate Real online course. Guys, I never wanted to be in credit repair, but what happened was is that I had a skill, I had a knowledge, and when I got in my gift, when I got in my purpose, I knew that what I was doing was not meant for me. I knew that. And I looked at the knowledge, skills, and experience I have, and God was like, there's a need here because this is a tainted industry. This is an industry where there's a lot of scamming. There's also an area where most of the people don't know about financial literacy. They don't know about credit. Guys, people need a vehicle. They need a solution. That's what this is. I am not passionate about credit. I'm passionate about you all having an option to help you build legacy, having an option to help you build wealth. Stop playing around with it. You can have all the nice fancy things. You can have the bins. Get the triplex first. This could be cash flow and passive income that then pays for your Benz note and then also gives you surplus. Stop using your credit for liabilities. Stop with these reward points. Stop with these vacations. Stop with all the, stop. Like, like your family going to retire because you went on a fancy vacation and got some reward points? You won't be able to retire your family, retire your spouse, leave legacy for your children because you got some uh, authorized account? Come on, somebody. And so I came on here today to share with you guys my action items holding myself accountable. Relaunch my course so I can get out to more people. Be more transparent with you guys about telling the story and getting on lives. And to reevaluate my relationships and my environment so I can do better. And I wanted you guys to know that I never wanted to be in the credit repair. I'm not passionate about credit. I'm passionate about this testimony. I'm passionate about it changing my life. I'm passionate about it being a vehicle for you guys to unlock doors and open up opportunities you never, ever, ever imagined. And yes, I'm going to make you do it the right way. And yes, I'm not going to fluff you. And yes, it's going to be a little bit of work. But if you do it right way, one good time, guys. One good time. You will be living a life that you never, ever imagined. And it's a blessing. So that's why my business is different. That's why this brand is different. And I never, ever wanted to be here. It chose me. Over the years, everybody kept on coming to me. And then I finally, when I became obedient, that led me here. When I stopped running from my calling and became obedient, it led me here. And I'm so grateful. So for all of you guys, you know, I know I just jumped on here. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to do better about um, sharing more of the story with you guys. And I hope that you all got something out of it. For anybody who is going through the valley right now, hold on. He's saying to you, hold on. If you could just make it through this season, if you had the vision, it's meant for you. If you saw it, it's yours. When it doesn't look like what you saw, he's just he's, he's grooming you for greatness, greater level, greater devil. You need to make it through that because you need to be battle tested because it's next level. These demons, these problems, these obstacles, they get way bigger. If you can't handle it at this level, how you expect to handle it at this level? So whatever you're going through right now, and one thing we learned, you need to be a good steward over what you have right now before he can bless you. Stop asking for a million dollars. You're not managing your 30,000 right. I'm just going to say it. If you can't manage 30,000, how is he going to bless you with a million? 
Start doing the self-assessment, guys. And start actually working on yourself and be obedient to your calling and doing the work. And you are going to unlock a life that you never, ever imagined. Amen? All right, guys, enjoy the rest of the day. I'm going to get something to eat for I have to catch this plane, and I will see you soon.